I wasn't going to start till five after, so just resume fellowship. Johnny Roberts is here tonight, and he asked me if I had anything to eat. I believe he's here one other time, and I tried to get him to stay to eat, and he wouldn't. He said, I'll eat the next time, so he asked me if I had anything to eat, so he, we're going to make him stay tonight, because we do have something to eat. We've got leftover biscuits, leftover ham. Sausage, bacon biscuits, and if you don't come over and eat it up, I'm going to take it home and give it to my coon dog. Really? So you better eat it. If you don't eat it, the dog's going to get it. So we're going to do that after church. That sound good? Everybody say, mmm. That sound good. Okay. What, uh, Ricky Skagg sung a song, You Can't Hurt Ham. You can eat ham cold. You can eat it hot. You can eat ham salad. You can eat ham with eggs. You can eat ham with... Time. She ain't been a cooking a whole lot, so Whew, I'm glad to see her on the men, ain't you? I'll be in a lot better spirit when she gets better. You probably have, my preaching will get better too. Somebody say thank the Lord for that. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and get started. Here's your sing a long song. Just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you, Lord, for always being there. When I was so down. came along made me want to shout I just want to thank you Lord thank you Lord if I had a thousand lives to live I'd give them all to my Lord He's been so good to me That is the least I could afford He's made the good times outnumber the bad He's been the best friend that I've ever had I just want to thank you Thank you, Lord. Say it now. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you, Lord, for always being there. Oh, you're sounding good. I 
No, I can't thank him enough for all his goodness and his love. He died on an old rugged cross, saved my soul when I was lost. I am a walking miracle today <laughs> Just because Jesus passed by my way I just want to thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Sing it I just want to thank you for every time you heard me pray, I just want to thank you, Lord, for always being there. When I was so down and out, you came along, made me want to shout. Just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on up, let's have prayer tonight. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all to my Lord. He's been so good to me. That is the least I could afford. He's made the good times outnumber the bad. He's been the best friend that I've ever had. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you, Lord, for always being there. When I was so down and out, you came along, made me want to shout. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Uh, my mind goes back to an old pastor friend of mine. He used to be my pastor, Arthur Luster. I heard him preach a sermon once. God's looking for a few good men to fill in the gap. He sort of took, like, you know, it used to be a commercial about the Marines. God's looking for a few good men. And... Uh, and uh, those good men, you know, one writer said, the good man is perished from the earth, but the good man is still uh, serving God. A good man is committed. A good man is committed to the cause. And I was thinking, we're here tonight because of people before us. See, we're reaping where we did not sow. And uh, we're, uh, we're here because of people in the past have committed their life to Christ. We're in a, living in a time to where it's instant this and instant that. You want your coffee that quick. You want it's, it's a, you got a microwave and you've got this and you've got that. 
You want it just that quick, and when you get it, you're done with it. That's the way a lot of people treat the church, the way a lot of people treat God. They're just, they just don't really want to commit. And I got all this on my mind when I saw Tracy tonight. Her granddaddy preached a sermon one time, I'll never forget, down at Grassy Creek Free Will Baptist Church. He preached on the foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? And that foundation comes through a commitment. And uh, what's wrong with commitment? Why are people afraid to commit? We... Uh, uh, I was preaching just not long ago. This might be a little harsh to some of you, but I've got booked for it. Uh, the Bible says in the last days people will forbid to marry. They'll forbid to commit to one another. They won't commit to, uh, to you know, to... To the, they want a, the, the men want a woman, but they don't want to commit to her and be a wife. The women want a man, but they don't want to commit to be a husband. Right here, and I, and I, got, on, I got on this right here, and uh, I said, if, if he just wants to live with you or she just wants to live with you, they're already looking for somebody else. They don't want to commit to you. They're already looking for somebody else. Can't you see that? So don't waste your time with somebody that won't commit to you. Hello? And God wants us to commit to him. Now, we're here tonight, we're listening, we're going to listen to some good gospel singing. And that's all. This church is here. That songbook, our songbook's here. This piano player, this piano's here. This church is here. Everything is here because somebody wanted to commit. And if you have not committed your life to Christ, if you've not committed your life to Christ, you need to get in. You just need to fall into the arms of perfect love, friend. Oh, no, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on and give it. He's awaiting to receive you. See, he proposed to us a long time ago. We just need to become part of the bride when we accept his proposal. Ain't that good? You said, no, I, I didn't come for that. Would you got it anyway? <laughs> but right here it is. These folks tonight, I've known them a long time. They're genuine people. Committed people. I know a lot of them's uh, mom and daddy, and they're committed. Committed people will stick with you. Amen. They'll. David had an army one time, Psalmist David, and there was two people. He said, "Now you stay right back here." And take care of everything and and watch everything for us. And we're going to go out here and fight, the, and fight this battle. And when they come back and with all the spoil, he took all the spoil and he divided it with, with the ones that fought the battle. And with the two that stayed back, that tarried with the stuff. They murmured about it. Because they didn't think that they needed what everybody else got. They didn't do no fighting. 
David said, I'm going to give them just exactly what you got because they stuck with the stuff. <laughs> they tarried by the stuff. These folks here, they've stayed with the stuff. They'll be a blessing to you. A big New Haven welcome for a downpour. Come on. Y'all just come and obey the Lord. They'll have church with you anytime you feel the need that you might like to commit your life to Christ tonight, you come. And they'll just keep right on singing and there'll be somebody pray with you. Wouldn't, wouldn't you like to see somebody get in tonight? Wouldn't you like to see somebody just commit tonight? Say, just take me. Amen. He, God still wants you, by the way. I tell everybody, he's like Uncle Sam. He wants you. He wants you. He don't need your money. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and the hills also, he just wants you. And when he gets you, he'll get a little bit of your pocketbook. You ready? All right, go ahead, brother. They're, they're done with me.
dark and the waves Showers of blessings may come any day But He'll bring me through And I'll stand and say God is still good We do it one more time God is still good When the waves roll high God is still good All through the night When I've done all I can And I don't understand God is still good Clouds of doubt May darken the ways Showers of blessings May come any day and I'll stand and say, God is still
I tell you what, I'm so thankful for the opportunity just to worship with you tonight. And that is honestly what we are here to do. So you obey the Lord, and we will too, and we can leave here saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, Stephen looked over and he said, you want to sing one? And yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I really do. I've got on my heart to sing that there's nothing that my God can't do. Let me just tell you my living testimony tonight real quick. It won't take a lot of time. But I hope that maybe this week you'll think about it and let the Lord just work in your heart. When I was five years old, um, I went blind. And the doctors told my mom and daddy that I'd never be able to see, I'd never be able to work, I'd never be able to really do anything. And my daddy was a praying man and my papa was a praying man. And many a trip to the barn, 